Hey, it's Kyle here, and we're back in the VAB for another Artemis video, but we are not doing one of the core Artemis missions. No, today we are doing the Lunar Gateways core stage. Now, if you haven't heard of the Lunar Gateway, this is a small space station which is going to be in the orbit of the Moon, and that we're going to use as a midway point. The Artemis spacecraft is going to rendezvous with the station, and all the crew will then get out and then jump into a lander craft which will also be docked at the station before they begin their descent down to the lunar surface. This is going to launch on a Falcon Heavy, and that's what we're building right now in the VAB, but we're starting with just the Falcon 9 core stage because we don't currently have one just sitting around. This is meant to launch in around 2024-2025, and I mean, based on NASA timeframes, that might slip a little bit. But as you can see on the screen, we're currently doing our testing because, let's be honest, landing a rocket vertically is no small feat. There's a very good reason why it hadn't been done before until SpaceX came along. See? Perfectly curbly. That sounds about right. So here we are upscaling that and there's obviously a few modifications that we need to make so that all three of those stages can operate separately and return to a vertical landing. When you're launching on a Falcon Heavy, you've got those two Falcon 9s on either side, a Falcon 9 in the middle is a core stage and then it's got its interstage at the top as well. During launch, the middle of the three boosters actually throttles right down to save on fuel and lets the other two do the job. And then once they separate, throttles right back up before then separating from the payload and it can go off on its merry way. In our case, our central core booster is going to be destroyed on re-entry as is detailed in NASA's plan for the launch and the two boosters will land out at sea on drone ships which I do not have. So let's talk about the Lunar Gateway because the Lunar Gateway is a modular space station and we're launching two modules together at once. These are the PPE, the power and propulsion element, and the Habitation and Logistics Outpost, or HALO. These are already under construction and are scheduled to launch in November 2024. The PPE was originally developed as part of the cancelled asteroid redirect mission, eventually being repurposed as a space tug and power plant. It's using electric propulsion in the form of Hall effect thrusters, alongside a single chemical engine, and that's to offset their smaller thrust ratio. Halo is also known as the Minimal Habitation Module, as it's quite literally a scaled-down HAB module purely to serve as the station's core, at least until a full module arrives. On screen you can see me constructing the Halo part of the station, which looks very similar to the modules on the ISS, and I've opted to add on a future module, the Canadarm3 Robotic Remote Manipulator Arm, as I can see trying to add that on its own being a very time-consuming thing to do on this game, especially as a separate mission, which would be, let's be honest, a pretty dull video. Which kind of brings me on to the additional parts planned to the station. There are several more parts planned, but only two of them currently have confirmed launch plans. That's the IHAB, the International Habitation Module, which is being provided by ESA in collaboration with Japan's JAXA. This is planned to launch with Artemis 4 in 2026 on the first crew launch of the SLS Block 1B, so that's with the bigger interstage, and that's going to be the proper habitation module for the station. And then there's Esprit, which is the European System Providing Refueling Infrastructure and Telecommunications Service Module. That's definitely a backronym. As the name suggests, it's going to provide fuel storage, communications equipment, and an airlock for science packages. And this is planned to launch on top of a crude Orion capsule as well as part of Artemis 5 in 2027. Everything from Artemis 5 onward is currently sitting in the proposed basket. There's an airlock module for EVA activities, and that would serve as the future docking port for the Deep Space Transport System for Mars. There's the Canadarm3 robotic arm, as we mentioned. That's being contributed by the Canadian Space Agency in exchange for two Artemis seats, basically, which I believe I mentioned in my Artemis 2 mission video. And then there's also the Gateway Logistics Modules, which will be used as refueling and resupply hubs and equipped with their own robotic arm. These modules are proposed to launch on Artemis 6 in 2028 and Artemis 7 in 2029, with an Artemis support mission meant to go in between to deliver another Gateway module. Okay, we've stacked our rocket, we've made tweaks to the payload and to the boosters, so it's now time to pop over to the launch pad and head into orbit. Well, it's another lovely day at the KSC, and it's time to get this heavy rocket into orbit. You can hear those 27 swivel engines kicking into life. They're the 1.25 meter engines, and there goes full thrust before we toggle down the core booster to 20% thrust. 
To do this, I set the independent thrust levels in the VAB for the engine. So that's you go into the engine and click independent thrust. And then I bound the toggle to the action group one. So I could just hit number one on the keyboard instead of trying to manually toggle all nine of them in flight. So hitting one toggles between 20% thrust and full thrust. I've also bound the separation, re-entry fins, and the independent thrust toggle for all engines into action group two. So instead of hitting space to do stage separation, this will fire the decouplers, toggle the core stage back to full thrust, power the two ejected thrusters down to 20% thrust, and then toggle the guidance fins to be deployable by using the brake button. This way our ejected thrusters will be able to control and slow themselves down to go and land and the main core powers all the way up to ensure that we continue having a good ascent trajectory. So we've separated from our boosters and we'll come back to those later in the video and we're continuing on our way to orbit. And it's funny that we're doing a Falcon Heavy video because at the time of recording this, SpaceX has just assembled a Falcon Heavy for its first mission since 2019. It's a classified mission for the US Space Force, which will launch two classified satellites to geostationary orbit. As with most classified payloads, the launch date's not been officially announced, though sources have specified no earlier than October 31st. If you're interested, I've linked the news article in the video blurb. Now, as we take ourselves into low Kerbin orbit, because we are, of course, going to the MUN today, not the moon, you'll notice we've separated from our core stage of the Falcon Heavy and are now using our interstage tug to get us into a stable orbit. And talking about orbits, we're doing something a little unusual. So the gateways plan to be deployed in what they call a highly elliptical near rectilinear halo orbit. This will bring the station within 1500 kilometers of the North Pole of the Moon, and then it'll be about 70,000 kilometers above the South Pole. So this is a polar orbit for all intents and purposes. You might be wondering why go for a polar orbit, and apparently the proposed NRHO, Near Rectilinear Halo Orbit, would allow lunar expeditions from the Gateway to reach a low polar orbit using just a delta V of 730 meters a second and a half day of transit time. Some of the big advantages of this orbit is that it has a minimal amount of communication blackouts with the Earth due to its very elongated orbit. There's also advantages when it comes to station keeping, because it would require less than 10 meters a second of delta V per year to keep itself in the orbit. And because of the angle it's coming from, spacecrafts launched from the station would be able to access almost all of the lunar surface. You just have to wait for the right time on the moon's rotation to depart. So there are a lot of positive benefits to this orbit, but it is also a bit of a pain in the butt to get to because it requires very precise timing to rendezvous with the gateway as it approaches the apoapsis point of its orbit. So that's going to require quite a bit of precision from the pilots and of course for communication between the gateway and the approaching craft. So we've lined up our trajectory to head over the moon's north pole and just separated from our interstage using the chemical engines. And now it's time to boot up the Hall Effect engines. And that's a lovely little noise. I've never actually used these in Kerbal before, so it's definitely a bit of a learning experience for me. And if I'm perfectly honest, the uh, blue glow is pretty nice. You know what they say, shiny. I mean, look at that. So I'm probably going to use these on some of my probes in the future, just to have a, a bit of a play around with it and see how it goes. But obviously, they're not very powerful, so we are going to use the chemical engine to assist them getting into that initial trajectory over the moon's north pole. The orbital period that NASA are spruiking for the Gateway is seven days. This is Kerbal, and it's a scale of roughly about 1 to 10. So this takes us to an orbit of 150 km periapsis with an apoapsis of about 7,000 km. This is unattainable due to the Moon's sphere of influence, so that ends up being about 2,000 km to actually make this work. Plenty of time to get a couple of beauty shots in there for the car to catch your attention, but we've now secured our orbit around the Moon, and as the music suggests, things are good. We've done something impressive. And this means I can show you how this orbit's meant to work. So you see on the right hand side of the screen is the orbit that is being predicted 
for how this is going to work for the Lunar Gateway. And you can see how we're doing almost the exact same orbit. And you can see the green communication line hardly was ever broken throughout that orbit. It's a very cool system, but unfortunately I now realize that I'm going to have to somehow manage to dock with the station when it's on the lower end of that orbit because that's where the docking happens according to the mission brief. Hooray, I believe we'll deal with that in the next mission. But in the meantime, we should go back to when we had the separation because the main mission's been completed. So it's now time for a bit of fun. I will happily admit I got a little bit ambitious here with my two Falcon 9 rockets and I thought, I wonder if I can land both of them. Now we don't have a drone ship, so obviously we're landing in the water and neither of them have parachutes either. So I've had to try and wing it basically. So I've been jumping backwards and forwards between the two of them and I tried this a couple of times to land both of them and it's just not viable. There's only one second difference between the two times that they need to start their suicide burns. And even if I could get them both to fire off at exactly the same time, they're not an exact indicator of when they should start and end. In fact, you'll see right here, you have to kind of slow down and put it up and down. So we've managed to get it down. And I think that's a great place to leave this video because we've completed the missions we set out to do. We've taken our lunar gateway to the Mun, we've put it into the orbit it's meant to be in, and we've even rescued one of our Falcon 9 boosters and saved it from the watery depths of destruction and the Kraken. Next time, I'll be heading back into career mode to get stuck in because KSP2 is landing in February. There's a lot for me still to do in the game, especially with the mods I have installed, so I'm going to try to streamline the videos to include multiple missions where appropriate. Until then, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next pass.